this tutorial we're going to have a look at how to use checklists. Before we actually go into the mechanics of how the checklists um, look and how we can manipulate them, let's see them in action. So first thing we're going to do then is place down a incident of some description. We'll just make a nice simple one. We'll just go chemical and we'll create a chemical incident. And then we'll just place some information in. Again, it doesn't have to be chemical. We'll just take it from here. It could be any type of incident. It depends on the information that we're going to fill out on the checklist. So we'll just place a time in. Um, we'll go, yeah, nine o'clock. So we've got the observation, we've got the grid location where the incident is, we'll make it actual, we'll go observed, we'll make it a generic storage container, and we'll just make it a um, small release. Onto the surface, we'll just select the first one that's in the ERG, which is uh, ammonia. And then we'll place a tick in the box so that the material name actually goes into the report. And then we will make it a spill. And I think that should be enough information. So we've got enough information within there. So when we go OK, three things that you can notice when you look at the software. One, we have uh, indication of where the incident has happened, which is directly on this uh, chemical site here. Second thing we have is calculate flashes, as it normally does to indicate what it wants you to do is calculate to update so that you can take the initial information that you've placed in from the CBRM1 so that the software can make the two, make the three, and then produce the template onto the map for you. But also in this case, because we've indicated we want to use checklists, we have the task update bar, which is situated at the bottom in this particular um, software and the way it's been configured down here. So that's flashing yellow. So if we double click onto that, that will open up and indicate to us that we have created a CBRM1. And here we have a set of checklists. These checklists are something that we have made up or our organization has made up and distributed them out so that everyone's using the same procedures. So for the checklist, we have received the information for the one, we have filled it out, um, we've got no gem text, and we've gone OK. So that's what we've done so far. So every time we click onto here, you can see that it will score out what we've done as a checklist and indicate uh, a date time stamp physically into there to say that's what we've done so far. So that corresponds with that time. And we can calculate to update. And if we go back, have a look, there's a template. So that's basically what's happened. At any stage we want to, we can go back into our checklist and we can start to go through. Have we checked units at risk? Yeah, there's no units. Do we want to add any notes? No. Check the report. Do we want to send a report? No. Nope. And then we want to go to the CBRN2 report. OK. So now we have completed all the steps that are associated with that CBRN1. Next thing we can do is go to the CBRN2. And we can open up the CBRN2. And we can place in whatever incident serial number we want to place in. Let's go like so. Uh, we won't place it up. Well, OK. We'll place some information in. There we go. So, filled everything out. Go approve. Again. Because we've indicated in checklists, we have two options again. We can calculate to update, or we can go into the task update, click onto there. Now we have an approved CBRN2. Are we going to transmit it? 
So we want to calculate to update. Do we need to relook at the units at risks? Do we need to warn units? Do we need to inform the staff? Do we need to update the commander's briefing? Do we need to evaluate? So all these things that we can carry out if we want to. Also, if we have um, one reporting plan or any additional stuff in comments, we can have a look at that. So let's see if we can oh, bring that up. That might be too big. There it is there. Let's bring it inside so that you can see. So there's some sort of warning reporting plan who's sending stuff to who. Okay. So all that can be associated with the checklists. So, how do we physically carry out these checklists and place the information in them? What we'll do is we'll stop that. We will go back to the map. So where checklists are situated is under File, on the menu bar, down to Properties, into Setup. When we look at the Setup window, we need to go down into Checklists and Aid Memoir. Click on to here. And if we wish to use checklists, like we have been using in this demonstration, then we need to ensure we have a tick placed up here saying that we want to use checklists. How we make checklists up is we go and open up the editor. Uh, it's saying I've got to close down, I've got checklists open. So let's just cancel on that. Let's go to uh, checklists saying you can't go into a checklist if you've still got it open. So let's go back to file, set up, open the editor now, and here we go. So inside the editor, what we can do is we can click on any report that we want and then decide what we want to do with that report. So in this case, let's say we want to go to oh, CB01 bio. Double click on that. Then in the middle part here, we can right click and then start to insert whatever information we want in the top. There is a slight anomaly um, when you place information in here. You have to start to type the information in within five seconds, otherwise it will just automatically place in whatever you've got in there, as it indicates there. You can always just um, edit that, and just go over it, and then just type the information that you want to place in. Then if you want any associate, uh, information associated with that step, you can place it into comments here. So for this first step of whatever you're going to do for your CBR on bio and you want some additional information, you can type that information in there. You can place in hyperlinks to documents or whatever you need to do. Then you can just keep on going, insert to the bottom, click in the next one then type in the next one, and so on and so on. Once you've filled out whichever report you want to do, you then save it, insert that copy into the system, and go OK. As you can see, you obviously only need one person, or one operator, or an organization in which to make all these different checklists and bits of information and steps depending on which reports you want to use. All that information can then be exported out into a folder and then other operators can import that information in and then everyone can use the same checklists. So that just gives you an overview of how checklists can be used, incorporated inside the system. The only additional thing I'll say about um, checklists is obviously everything here is in English. It doesn't have to be in English. It can be in any language.
So if you require for certain notes to be in a different language, that can also be incorporated inside the system. Steps can be in whatever language, the notes can be in whichever language. So that's all there is on checklists.